Hello everyone. I wanted to start off with a little exercise. Um, so this is an old piece of scripture in the Middle Ages taken from a text. Um, I want you to notice a few things about this. So one, the art is very one-dimensional. There's not very much dimension in medieval art. Um, second thing, there is um, a lot of activity going on this page. A lot of wildlife. You notice there is a king in the upper corner. Um, you can notice the church at the bottom. A lot of your medieval art was centered around biblical text. So lots of pictures of Jesus, Mother Mary, um, a lot of a lot of the artwork depicted daily life, such as loyalty to the king, swearing an oath of allegiance to the king. Um, but I just wanted to let you see what this looked like. Um, the language this was written in was Latin. Remember, this is after the fall of the Roman Empire. So most of them did know Latin in some context. Your, your leaders um, who were in charge of um, plots of land called fiefs or fiefs. And then your kings, your bishops, your archbishops, the Pope, a lot of these people would be educated and they would know how to write and use Latin. So I just wanted to show you that real quickly before we move on to our lesson for today. So I found this website and I'm going to share it with you on the post tab later, um, but it's interactive. So when you move your mouse over it, you can click and it will show you pictures and descriptions of what is here. So your assignment for tomorrow, I'll give you a brief update for it, um, is doing a Venn diagram, the circles, the intertwined circles, or you can do an H chart. That's a T chart with three columns. And you're going to be talking about the differences and similarities between manorialism and feudalism. So one of the ways that manorialism or the medieval manor is different is because it is a way of life that includes everything the buildings where they planted what they planted the workers um, the bishops that is the area in which they lived so the manor is where they lived where they worked feudalism is the system of order and government under which they work and I'll show you a little bit of that in just a second, some more detailed descriptions of those roles. But I want you to notice here, the largest building on the manor was the castle. So when you think of the Middle Ages, you think of knights going off to battle to protect their lady, um, the lords that were over all of this and controlled the system of government, and they all lived in this castle. So it is the largest building, the most prominent building, most important building, other than the church on the medieval manor. Now, every manor had some kind of place of worship. Um, and you notice here, and I'll move my mouse this way, the priests had a house. And it, even in modern Catholicism, they have a building in where the um, in where they would live called a parsonage. But the church was a very important place here on the manor. It was the second most important place. Um, I'm sure the people of the Middle Ages would argue that it was the most important place because everything, again, it centered around Christianity. Typically, um, and even today, this is still a common practice, typically your, um, your graveyards are located somewhere near the church because that's where all the services would take place. There wasn't a Martin Wilson funeral home in the Middle Ages. Fun funeral homes are sort of created later, but all of your funeral services would happen at that church and they would be buried right on the plot. Some other things you'll notice, a majority of the people who live down here in these houses are the serfs and the peasants and the skilled workers. So, about 90% of the manor was made up of working class. So you had to have lots of labor to maintain the manor. So 90%, that's nearly all of the people on the manor 
who are in that lowest working class. You did have people who specialized in different areas. So your lowest peasants would probably be field hands. You can notice here they, they sort of rotated their fields. So this right here where it says fallow, that is just a field that they were not using that year. They were giving it a chance to become nutrient rich, nutrient rich again. So they would rotate those fields so that the largest yield of crop could be taken. You have the orchard, which that would be used, of course, for preserving veg, uh, preserving fruits. So like peaches, apples, um, maybe some grapes for wine because, you know, the, the water back then was very contaminated. They do have a well here. Um, you can see at the bottom that they did have a town well that was their source of water. They built along a riverbed or creek bed so that they could use water power to power their mills. Um, this mill actually might look familiar to you if you've ever been in North Dam State Park. They used the mill by the river to create grains. Then you have a bakehouse, which is basically a bakery. Um, they would create breads and things for people. A blacksmith would be in charge of making the knight's armor, maybe guns, weapons. And then down here, you would have a common pasture for your cows, for fresh milk, maybe some cheese, some butter. You would have goats. You would have um, pigs, horses for battle. So all of those would be kept there. Um, you can see on here, this is interactive. That's a good picture of a medieval knight. Um, you have, there's some video links in here about the people who are dressed in period clothing that you can learn more about. Um, and it does give definitions for different things. So I will post this in our description later so that you can sort of dig around and play with this interactive manner yourself. So let's take a look at the feudal pyramid because this is probably the most important thing that you need to understand from chapter 14 and how this loyalty and servitude worked. So you have the king and the king owned all of the land in the country. He made the laws, but he would give parts of land called a fife to the Lord's nobles, otherwise known in your text as the vassals. So the king would give working peasants and these fiefs to their vassals. Um, and those are also called, again, lords and nobles. So in exchange for that, the vassals would provide military aid in the form of knights. So if anything were to come up with battles, but they would also serve their loyalty. And you think, well, that really doesn't mean a whole lot. Well, back in these times, this was basically their system of government. Again, feudalism is the system of government. The manor is where they worked and where they lived. So loyalty was huge. If you broke your loyalty, you could be punished by death. And then down here at the bottom, you have the actual military service, your knights. They were the ones who went into battle um, for the king if there were invaders or if they needed to protect something. So... The vassals would also pro provide protection to the knights. So they would provide shelter. So they gave them, you know, a, a land, a piece of land to live on. And then they would also give them food. So they got their own, serv uh, their own serving and portion of food that was created by the peasants working on the farm. In exchange, the knights would offer their military service and their ho homage their homage was rather important. Sorry, I, I'm getting a little distracted. So homage was very um, important um, because that's where they were given special honor or they were given res respect that was shown publicly. So public acknowledgement that they were in the feudal alliance. So they held a very important prestigious role as well as offered their military service. I think that's why so many of these depicted um, maybe movies and TV shows, like shows that are popular even today, like Outlander or movies like The Knight's Tale. Um, the knights were almost put on this pedestal of respect and honor because they did so much to protect the land. Then at the very bottom, 
you have your serfs and peasants. These are the ones who probably did more for the kingdom than anything, because again, they made up 90% of the working class in a manner. In exchange, they were given shelter, they were given a place to live, they were given protection, and they were also given a serving of food. What they did for the people above them was they farmed the land, kept it tilled, kept it worked, picked it, preserved it, and then they also had to pay rent. So you're like, well, that's kind of a crappy thing to do. I mean, they're already working themselves to death, and then you're going to also make them pay a land tax and pay rent for what you're technically giving them. You got to understand that this was this was the working order of feudal society. They had to maintain order in order for this to work. And a lot of times in many movies that you will see, you know, the peasants uprise and they are tired of working that way. Um, a great cartoon, you know, friendly version that you're not going to get in trouble for watching is The Hunchback of Notre Dame. It's a great way to understand that feudal society and how the archbishop has so much power and how the knights protect the people of the town. So if you have Disney Plus or you have a way maybe on YouTube you can watch some clips, that is a great way to sort of see this in action and how, how important it was to maintain order within the manor. Um, and then... Hold on. No, I think that is that is all of what I wanted to show you. Um, I do have a small activity I want you to do today. Um, it is a medieval manner, sort of you buy your own things and you sort of pretend like you are in charge of a manor. And so you will be given prices. You can spend whatever you want. But again, make sure you have enough to maintain the manor, to maintain order in the manor. Um, a lot of people who may do this activity say, well, I just need one baker. I just need one blacksmith. Well, the average age of someone who would die in the peasant class was 30 years old. So keep that in mind when you're doing this activity. I will upload that activity with this video clip into Teams today. That is my child. I apologize. Yes, baby. Um, so anyways, that's your video clip for today. I'm sorry for the interruption from my child, um, but you'll go ahead and do that today. That'll be due by tomorrow. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you again soon.